guys and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of drawing a horse portrait. I'm going to start by showing you how you can understand your subject's form by using basic shapes. How to achieve similarity by drawing the correct proportions. And how to create the illusion of form and volume by shading your drawing. I kindly advise you to always start by warming up your hand muscles. Here, I am doing this by sketching horses in different positions, as it can give me a better understanding of the subject. I also take advantage of this practice to show and explain to you that you can draw literally anything by starting with basic shapes. I mostly use straight lines and as you can see, simplifying your drawing can give you a really good starting point to begin outlining the right proportions and to achieve resemblance. So start by outlining your subject using straight lines, then discover other more complex shapes to help you get closer to achieve some resemblance. Observe your reference and use curved lines, circles, cylinders and so on to create the illusion of three-dimensionality and perspective. Then start placing finer details that will make your drawing more accurate. If you are a beginner, an easier way to understand your subject and then help you sketch it is to trace line directly onto your reference photo. You can start by outlining as I have shown you previously, then focus on symmetry and measuring units. You can then start drawing guidelines onto your paper and build your portrait using measuring units to mark section by section the features of your subject. Start from general to finer details until your sketch is accurate. Once you are satisfied with your sketch, use an eraser to remove most of the guidelines. Depending on the values you will be using in the shading process, unwanted lines might show through the layers. 
Of course, if you aspire to a more sketchy rough look, you can leave them as they are and go directly to shading. I start by identifying and marking the darker areas, then blend them into the lighter ones. of the shapes of each section of the horse's head and look at my reference photo to observe where the light comes from, what are the points where it touches the forms and where the shadows lay. Form is what we are trying to indicate when we are shading, so it is very important to determine the angle of your light source and understand how the shadows are cast. To understand that, you might find it useful to practice shading a sphere, a cube and a cylinder, as these are the most common geometrical shapes in which you can fit most of the forms you would want to draw. For example, you can draw the fingers of a hand starting from cylinders and if you know how to shade a cylinder to give it the illusion of three-dimensionality, you will find it easier to shade a human hand correctly. Please let me know in the comments below if you would find a video like that useful. For this drawing, I am using very basic materials and I advise you, if possible, to pay more attention to this aspect, as the materials you are using can make a really big difference in the final piece. I've used an HB mechanical pencil for sketching and willow charcoal stick for shading, which I will talk about in just a moment. You will also see me using a regular eraser and a pencil eraser for the highlights. As for the paper, I've used simple copy paper to practice sketching and I was so drowned in the process that I forgot to change it with a more quality paper. But it is more than okay as I made this drawing just as a study and archival issues were not my concern at the time. This also allowed me to see how shading with charcoal will behave on this kind of paper. It is well known that in drawing with charcoal, you need a paper that has a little bit more of a texture so that it can retain the charcoal powder. You can see in my case how those darker shades almost vanish when I try to blend and I remove more than I would have wanted. And this is mostly because the paper can take no more charcoal dust. The charcoal itself is also something you need to take into consideration. Here I am using willow charcoal stick, which is a natural charcoal that does not make intense dark shades as opposed to compressed charcoal. But it is great for studies or sketching, as it is easier to remove. Compressed charcoal, as the name itself suggests, it is charcoal powder compressed with a binder. This will give you much stronger dark shades, and it tends to be harder than willow sticks, to the point that you can sharpen it and get more control and finer lines. 
so a compressed charcoal stick could have had better results on this paper than the willow one. I continue to add more shades and blend them to make a smooth transition from dark to light values. I also try to remove some of the charcoal with tissue paper or with an eraser in the more highlighted areas, such as the nostrils. This will give the portrait more volume and make it look more realistic. In portraiture, eyes are in general the main focal point of the entire composition. Whether we are talking about a human portrait or an animal one, the eyes are the area of emphasis that demands the most attention and to which the viewer is drawn. Contrast is especially important in this area and if you do it right, you can shade everything else more loosely. The eyes will keep drawing you back to them. I keep going back and forth with shading and highlighting to obtain the right contrast. It looks like the combination of the materials I am using is giving me a bit of a hard time as I find it difficult to get more intense dark shades after removing the excess charcoal powder. This causes me a bit of frustration and makes me feel that I am spending too much time trying to do the same thing, with very little progress. the point where I can begin to go into more detail. I continue to create contrast where needed by playing with dark and bright values, shading and creating strong highlights on the most lit areas, such as the nostrils, in the eyes area and on the horse hair. Drawing the horse here on the back of the neck suddenly makes my composition more interesting. loosely, almost out of focus so it blends with the background and creates more depth. Intense shadows are very important as well as bright highlighted areas. The contrast gives the portrait a more dramatic look. I'm getting closer to the end. Now I'm adding a few shades into the background, so it feels like a blurred field. This and the horse hairs lost in the background make my portrait make part of a story ready to be discovered, adding a little bit of mystery to the composition and making it more interesting and captivating. Mm. 
I add a few scattered hairs with my pencil eraser and some more final touch-ups for a more realistic look. For now, I feel like my work on this study is done and I am pleased with the result. I remember drawing horses when I was a little girl and now drawing this one I know it won't be the last time. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.